excited for next film. Um, it started filming in February. Um, <laughs> Uh, very successful production. It's easier to act um, who Harry is in, in each of the films because firstly I've, I've been through all the stuff that he's going through, like the hormones and all of that stuff, kind of relatively recently, and so it's quite fresh in my mind. And, um, well, I mean, it continues, you know, it doesn't stop after you turn 14. Um, and then, I, so I suppose it's, it's actually been made easier by the fact that I've been doing it since, you know, I was 11. I suppose you get to know the character sort of so well that, that it makes it a lot easier to act in, in the long run. Get it and see what some of your characters, and just as a, sort of a follow on from that. The way that sort of kids going from, you know, where we were, I, I, I was 11, you were 12 when we started, and yes. you were 10. So I think we've grown up in sort of the normal way, not the normal environment, but the normal way that, that kids going from one age to the other would have done, really. I mean, I think there's nothing peculiar about the way we matured, I don't, I think. Better when you're asking kids their scenes, etc. What I was, uh, felt was that there was maybe a problem in that um, the, uh, these guys would think of me as a teacher or an authority figure, and I didn't much like the thought of that because um, I wanted to get... I, I felt that they had grown up to the point where they got a lot to give, and one of the wonderful things about them is they all want to be better. All of, all of the actors want to be better which is terrific. But of course, they, if they take you as an authority figure, then they're obedient and they're not giving properly. And so there was a day in which I, I found myself having a fight with one of the Weasley twins in order that I, I would um, uh, lose my dignity. Um, I couldn't possibly be treated as an authority figure if I was a fat, middle-aged man rolling in the dust uh, with a 70-year-old boy. So. <laughs> about growing up along with the characters and what are you going to do afterwards? Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, compared to when I first sort of um, did the first film, when I was, it was a whole new sort of experience and I'd never sort of done anything like it before and it was all a bit scary. And um, well, now I think um, we've all sort of um, probably learned quite a lot since then. And, and uh, it's quite strange having a new director each time and uh, sort of like you don't really know what to expect. But, um, Oh, yeah, Mike, Mike was great this time. He was a really good, good laugh, and uh, yeah, we had, we had a good time. Yeah. Being published, are you, uh, are you just like everyone else your age, queuing up to get it and see what's become of your characters? And for future instalments, you know, Hermione and Ron have got to get it together. This has been going on so long now. Come on. So um, yeah. I'm hoping that will. Uh, <laughs> sorry to make you feel uncomfortable there. <laughs> uh, hopefully that that that's my. Hope for the future installments. And it's one of those things by the end you're just completely exhausted. No, no, I don't I don't not at the moment. I have had, but not at the moment, no. <laughs> Room <laughs> Which which bit of the question we answer? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a girlfriend? Oh well, no, not at the moment, no. Uh, I'm learning to drive at the moment, so that's taking, taking up most up of my time. <laughs> <laughs> Asked Mike if he would do it, he said no. So um, I think he 